Hello, I am Dr. Srinivas Murthy TM, a senior ENT consultant practicing at Eshwanpur. I practice both at Columbia Asia Referral Hospital as well as at my clinic called Srinivas Speciality ENT Center. The patient comes to us with, say, a lump behind the ear. Now, uh, we need to understand uh, what are the structures which are around the ear. Now, this is uh, called the pinna, the outer ear. The area behind this uh, has a bone called the mastoid bone. And uh, there is a muscle which connects the mastoid bone to our uh, collar bone called the sternocleidomastoid. There are multiple lymph nodes in this area. Uh, in the neck, there are uh, more than a hundred group of lymph nodes, which can, which actually uh, drain the head and neck area. There is a mandible in front, that is a jawbone, and a parotid gland. Now, th as we go deeper, there are blood vessels, nerves, and some more uh, muscles and lymph nodes and other uh, glands. Now, when somebody comes to us and says, um, "I have been having a lump uh, behind my ear." It could be as innocuous a problem as a swelling arising from the skin. Like it could be a sebaceous cyst, it could be a small uh, fibroma or a nodule, or it could be a congenital cyst which can arise from areas where the two bones meet called suture line. Uh, it's a congenital uh, problem, that is, uh, it's a problem which would have happened uh, during. Uh, a child being in the womb itself, but will probably present a little bit later, uh, called the dermoid cyst. It can uh, be uh, swellings which arise from the bone, it can be a small benign bony swelling. But generally, if a patient comes to us and says that um, they are having a painful swelling behind the ear, the common things that we look for is whether it is a parotid gland swelling because part of the parotid gland goes behind the ear also. So it can swell up and cover up that uh, groove that is there behind your ear called as the postoral groove. Common is a salivary gland infection. You can also have swellings of uh, lymph nodes in that area. Postoral group of lymph nodes can swell up. Most common causes being a uh, viral infection, a uh, skin infection of the scalp. Somebody might have scratched their uh, hair uh, because of itching and then it might have got secondarily infected and then you can have it. Sometimes you can also have an ear lobe infection secondary to piercing the ear lobe and then you have a node there. But you can also have swelling in that area secondary to infection arising from the ear. Now this can happen because of infection in the ear canal which is called as otitis externa which can lead to an infection of the lymph node behind the ear and we will have to look for that infection in the ear canal or it can be uh, because of a infection from the middle ear which has spread to the bone behind the ear called mastoiditis and subsequent uh, destruction of the bone leading to pus accumulating behind the ear called as a postural abscess. Now this can happen in two scenarios. In young children it can happen following a bacterial infection itself which has been neglected and it just flares up to the extent of mastoiditis and then lead to a subperiosteal abscess. Or it can happen in a person who has had a condition called as cholesteatoma. Now cholesteatoma is a uh, condition of the ear wherein the skin of the ear drum starts growing into the bone behind the ear and hence it erodes, erodes and then secondly gets infected and then it uh, comes out of the bone to lie under the skin. Now these things don't happen overnight. There will be uh, certain um, symptoms which would have been there before which can be neglected. So to prevent these kind of complications is the reason why most ENT surgeons when they find a middle ear infection they would be recommending the patient to undergo a surgery to prevent such complications. Now this complication can happen in either a regular hole in the eardrum or in cholesterol. Occasionally a um, deeper group of lymph nodes in the neck, uh, in the upper part of the neck can get swollen and become painful because of uh, again a viral infection or other infections 
like a bacterial infection and occasionally because of tuberculosis and uh, because of certain tumorous growths also hence any swelling which is not responding to regular medication and which is lasting for more than 3 or 4 days does need further investigations uh, by means of uh, blood investigations maybe uh, imaging um, and ultrasound uh, or a ct scan uh, or sometimes we may even ask for a fine needle aspiration cytology